y'all. It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out the Jim Cornette versus Russo incidents. Now it's been heavily documented and it's been heavily stated that these two guys don't like each other. So we're gonna check out the main reasoning behind these issues, how it stemmed, how it started from none other than a uh, top 10 wrestling. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. You guys are amazing. Let's get right into this, man. Jim Cornette and Vince Russo are perhaps the two most polarizing figures in wrestling history. Both of their supporters and both definitely have their detractors. But their most significant detractors, you ask? Well, each other. Mm -hmm. Jim Cornette and Vince Russo despise each other. And in this video, I will explain why. I'm going to explain the origin of their hate for each other and the various incidents and exchanges that have taken place between the two over the years. What's up guys, it's Greg or Top 10 Wrestling and welcome to the Jim Cornette vs Vince Russo incidents. If this video hits 2500 likes, I will release another video about a Jim Cornette feud in the future. Kenny Omega, Joe <laughs> Ryan maybe? Subscribe uh, to see that. He, and let's Jim Cornette does not video. like in Kenny Omega at all. In 1993, Jim Cornette began working for the WWF. Until this point, Cornette had worked in numerous territories and promotions such as Mid-South, Jim Crockett Promotions slash WCW, as well as being the promoter of Smoky Mountain Wrestling, mm -hmm. which he was still serving as when he joined the WWF. Cornette would join the WWF and take on numerous roles, including being a manager, color commentary, and being a member of the booking committee. Mm -hmm. Vince Russo began working for the WWF in 1992. Russo was first hired as a freelance writer for the WWF magazine. He got the role after writing a letter to Linda McMahon. And over the years, Vince Russo would receive various promotions. He would later become editor of the WWF magazine in 1994, and then in 1996, he would be promoted to the creative team. The year 1996 was also notable for two other things. The first being that Jim Cornette would sign full-time for the WWF this year. Smoky Mountain Wrestling had gone defunct, and Jim was given additional major roles roles in scouting and talent development. The other thing that happened in 1996 is that Monday Night Raw hit a ratings low of 1.8 as WCW Monday Nitro drifted away from them in the ratings war and were beating out Raw every single week and it was new creative team member Vince Russo who Vince McMahon decided to call upon to make changes to the product and essentially just asked him to make the WWF his version of wrestling and this is where we set the scene. Russo's style of writing and his philosophy for a wrestling product came to be known as Crash TV. It was a show that featured edgy storylines and conduct, sexual content, violence, mm. and of course, a good old swerve. Russo's booking style is heavily inspired by the Jerry Springer show. Mm. But while Russo was given the keys to the kingdom, he had his detractors. That of course being Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette has a completely different wrestling philosophy to Vince Russo. Whereas Vince Russo's booking style sees more of an emphasis on storylines and in-ring action, Jim Cornette's is the opposite. Mm -hmm. Jim Cornette has also been very outspoken about hardcore comedy and spot-filled wrestling matches. Yep. And in case you hadn't guessed, Jim Cornette completely rejects Vince Russo's wrestling philosophy. And it's no secret that during their time together in the WWF, the two butted heads a lot. The first time Jim Connor and Vince Russo had a confrontation was during a Monday Night Raw, where six of their eight matches were set to end by DQ, and Jim Cornette was baffled by this. Damn. And he looked at me when I said, we've got seven out of eight DQs now. Are we? Do we need to do this? He said, DQ, shmeq, nobody cares, and turned around <laughs> like he was going to walk off from Damn. Me. <laughs> seven out of your eight matches end in DQs? That's kind of wild. I ain't going to hold you. <laughs> that is I swear hysterical. that's a quote. I swear it's a quote. And does DQ shmeq, nobody cares, and starts to walk away. And that's when I said, well, I tell you what, mother you're going to care in about a year, year and a half when you're back running a video store because you put this whole place out of business. <laughs> and all the boys heard that. Jim Cornette and Vince Russo's constant disagreements led to Jim Cornette's removal from the booking committee. But by the new millennium, Jim Cornette was managing OVW and Vince Russo had left the WWF for WCW. 
And of course, not too long into the new millennium, WWF bought WCW. Mm-hmm. Russo would make a brief return to the now WWE in 2002, but only lasted two weeks. And Vince Russo and Jim Cornette would never meet again in the WWE. But they would meet again in TNA Wrestling. In June 2006, Jim Cornette would join TNA Wrestling as management director. And in that same year, three months later, on September 21st, Vince Russo was re-signed by Dixie Carter as a writer for the TNA creative team. Vince Russo said the following describing his and Jim Cornette's time together in TNA. You mentioned Jim Cornette's name uh, earlier on. I want to bring Jim up because obviously everybody knows the history between you two. What was it like for you to work with uh, Jim Cornette when you came back? Well, so fee wise, it was just two completely different pages. Did you guys butt head a lot? We 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 didn't butt heads because I I got to be honest with you, I'm not. When it comes to wrestlers and when it comes to guys that have been around a long time, I'm not going to stand there and argue with them. Like I, I'll stand there with Cornette, and I'll. You know, say, say, okay, Jim, this is what we want to do, okay? If Jim says, no, I want to do this, that, and the other thing, and here's the reason why, and Jim would get very passionate about it, so I know he really believed in it. Nine times out of ten, I did it the way he wanted to do it. We nev- When Jim and I were together, there, we, there was never this. Right. I mean, aside from what people want to believe, I never got in an argument with Jim. Jim and I never got into a fight. I mean, it, it's always the stuff when we're apart and then I just start reading, I just get torn to shreds. Jim Cornette was very vocal about the fact he did not agree with Vince Russo's booking style. On September 15th, 2009, Cornette was released from TNA and he claims the reason for his release was because he was not 100% behind TNA's creative team, which was of course being headed by Vince Russo. And this is the last time the two would ever work together. But somehow, it got so much worse. The following that I'm about to read is an email that Jim Cornette sent to TNA official Terry Taylor in March of 2010. I was going through and deleting a bunch of old emails and found this last one from you. I don't mean to stir anything up, but I felt I had to write and get some things off my chest. I have always liked you, and we have never had a problem. I am sure you have heard some of my commentaries on TNA, and I want to make sure you know I wish you no ill. Nor do I wish anyone in TNA ill, including talent, TV crew, and office staff. If the incident had not happened when it did, I would have quit anyway a month later when the news broke that Hogan and Bischoff were taking over the company. And you know this to be true, because the only reason I was ever there was that I thought TNA would be a promotion to keep Vince from having a monopoly and be an alternative to this BS sports entertainment. Obviously, Mm. with the new regime, that is not in the plans, and I would have made a hopefully graceful exit, shaking my head and wondering why. But taking that out of the equation, I was glad I worked for TNA. It's just frustrating and disappointing to me that it couldn't have turned out better, if not for one thing. I can move on with no hard feelings, but that one thing is big, and is in danger of consuming my life if I don't just come out and say it. I will say it because I'm trying to quell the burning in my heart. I hate Vince Russo. I despise Vince Russo. I want Vince Russo to die. If I could figure out a way to murder him without going to prison, I would consider it the greatest accomplishment of my life. I hate him for the money he's cost me. I hate him for what he's done to the business. I hate him for keeping TNA from being competitive to WWE. I hate him for the careers, even the lives he's ruined with his SHIT booking and the irreparable damage he's done to every promotion he's been involved with. I regularly wake up from dreams in which I am in the act of murdering him. I literally burn whenever I think of him. I have sworn to myself that I will willingly go to jail if I ever see him in person again. What? And he had better pray to his fictitious invisible man in the sky that day never comes. I intend to make it my life's work and mission to F with him and anything he ever has anything to do with in the wrestling business. Why am I writing you this? One, I got the irresistible urge to to explain to you the depth of my abhorrence for this abominable prick. And two, I want to make sure that you and anyone you care to share this with knows that I truly and genuinely wanted TNA to succeed and liked working with all of you. I am no longer a supporter of TNA as a company. I hope it goes under quickly and painfully because of the stupidity Dixie has exhibited in employing Russo and now the WCW murderers. And I apparently will see my wishes come true with a new direction. But I really did want to see it succeed. 
read. I still like everyone there, and I'm only mad at a few people. Jeff, for talking me into coexisting with that miserable waste of human flesh oh. for three years, to the point where I have trouble looking at myself in the mirror, and not a day goes by that I am not ashamed of myself for abandoning every principle I've ever had and speaking to the mother effer. And Dixie, not just for employing that useless twat, but for lying to me about the reasons for my firing, never mention Ed Ferrara's name, and acting like Russo had no part in it, and lying about me. Letting some Russo stooge spread rumours that I was fired for acting unprofessionally towards him, then not putting her name on the retraction while knowing it wasn't true. Otherwise, I like everyone there and wish their hard work could be rewarded, and they could all make millions, but they won't because of a lack of competence and the judgement in their leadership. I have nothing to lose. I'm done with corporate wrestling, and I'll never again have to occupy the same arena or even city with Vince effing Russo, but I still feel bad for everyone who has laboured long and hard in vain because of what he's done to the company's chances. I like you. I like Tanay and West, and Mitchell, and Sashadi, and Ryder, and the talent, and the crew, and the, all the rest even Penza, and I don't want you or any of them to take it personally when I verbally roast TNA every chance I get. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, Jeff should have known way better than to hire that asshole. And Dixie, as clueless as she may be about wrestling, should have been more careful in whom she entrusted her father's money, and more perceptive when it came to spotting imbeciles. I don't want any of you to be harmed or affected because of their stupid decisions, but as I said, it's now my life's work to F with anything Russo has anything to do with. I wish you all good luck, and I'm sorry if anything I say or do causes you any problems, and I hope one day to be in charge of a wrestling promotion with the funds to hire you or to work in it, but I just so you know, will F with any company Vince Russo is involved with until Bro. I draw my last breath. And if there is an afterlife, I will return to haunt his miserable ass. Either that, or I'll will myself to live long enough to piss on his effing tombstone. And hey, hatred is a hell of a motivator. JC. In response to this email, TNA got a lot My boy is the epitome of hate. My man's is the epitome of it's on sight. The dude hates him so much that he will devote his time to anything that he does to just crap on it. Like he has dreams of killing this man. Hopefully this is past, but... I don't think it has. We're talking about Jim here. Uh, wow. <laughs> law firm involved. The law firm contacted Connor, letting him know that his comments were being viewed as a terroristic threat and said any further threats to contact Vince Russo or any TNA personnel, directly or indirectly, shall be viewed as acts in furtherance of such threats and shall be pursued and prosecuted accordingly. And somehow, this still wasn't the end between these two. You would think it Throughout would the be. times the two worked together, we'd only ever hear stories about them through the occasional dirt sheet story and shoot interviews. But nowadays, we have been given plenty of details on the hatred between these two thanks to a little thing called podcasts. Mm -hmm. Both Jim Cornette and Vince Russo host popular podcasts, with Jim Cornette's podcast of the experience and drive through having many stories over the years all about Vince Russo and some legendary rants. During a 2017 podcast, Cornette said the following about him. They him of being a liar and a fraud, but they prove it time and time again. But Vince Russo has said, I'm a coward. I'm not a man unless I will say these things to his face. Like we can somehow debate this out and all walk off and be friends into the sunset. Well, he said anytime, anywhere. Well, Vince, I got an offer for you, Vince Russo, and I want all your little stooges to listen real close, and I want them to tell you. I want them to play this for you, because I want you to hear it. You say you want to meet me face to face, and you want me to say all these things to you in person instead of behind your back. Well, we ain't going to do it on a, po a podcast. We ain't going to have a debate. Here's the deal. You send me a date and a time, and an address. And it doesn't have to be your home address because I know you don't want me to know where you live because you probably do live in your in-law's basement since you're an unemployed failure and oh you're my toxic God. and nobody wants to have anything to do with you. And every wrestling promoter, every great wrestling veteran of the last 20 years that's ever drawn any money Ooh. has nothing but bad things to say about you. Bret Hart said you ought to be hung in a parking lot. I know you don't want me to know where you live, so send me a date and a time and a neutral address and I'll come to you. You don't have to come to me. You're in Evansville now. It's not that far away. I'll come to you. 
Because I know you don't have money for gas, Vince. Being as you're in such a miserable state and you're living on food stamps, your wife's probably ready to divorce you because you haven't had a job and been employed in years. Oh so send God, me a date, bro. a time, and an address. I'll come to you. Make it a public park, maybe somewhere out of the way, somewhere where there won't be too many people to intervene. You, you've never been in a fight, gutless pussy. I can whip you. Besides, it's not even going to be hand to hand because I said no guns, no knives. But I got a bat. I could find a stick. I don't give a. F Following this challenge and threats, Russo filed a restraining order against Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette, in response to receiving his restraining order, made copies of it, signed them, and sold them on his website, with all the proceeds going to charity. Wholesome W, I guess. But as of 2023, these two have not met for a fight, nor a debate, and from what we've heard in that monologue from Cornette, and the fact that a restraining order was filed against him by Russo, it's most likely that we will never see either of those scenarios. 2,500 likes for a Jim Cornette versus Kenny Omega video. Oh, this was... This was great. <laughs> I gotta go ahead and like this one, because... That was fantastic. I ain't gonna lie to you. That was fucking... That was fantastic. The dude literally made copies of the restraining order to sell on his website for charity, bro. I'm... Like I said, he is the personification of it's on site. When I see you, we don't have to talk. We don't have to debate nothing. I'm just going to fight you. Hey man, I, I'm gonna say this. Sometimes you gotta let that hate go. Do not let this type of hate fester in you. Do not. You gotta let it go. Sometimes it may be the hardest thing to do, but you gotta let it go, y'all. Because if you don't, you end up like Jim Cornette, ready to, you know, have dreams about murdering someone. Comment down below. Let me know. Do you guys agree with Jim Cornette's, uh, his, uh, hatred for Vince Russo? Do you think it's justified or do you think he should probably just let bygones be bygones? I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150k and I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. And you're in the Clutch World Heavyweight Champion. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.